Well, I think we did. And, and uh, the different bit, if I can just underline that, because, you know, you were part of those conversations. What we set out to do from the very beginning was not to have one of those formulaic debates with presenters also trying to become the star of the show. We genuinely wanted to do a people's forum. And Madeleine Greit, Grant in The Telegraph and Quentin Letts in The Times uh, this morning both say that was the great achievement. We actually heard, like this guy here who kicked the ball rolling and those lovely people in the background, they genuinely had their say to that woman, Liz Truss. And intriguingly, uh, on the way in, 58% were in favour of uh, Liz and 40% were don't know. On the way out, 71% were pro Liz and it don't know a drop to 29%. So it worked. Headlines, timing of cuts. Liz said she will help people with the cost of living crisis, but can't guarantee that it will happen before April. That's a long, long time to wait. I think people will want to go back to that. Uh, European Convention on Human Rights, she'll try to reform it. If she can't do that, she will revoke it and replace it with a British Bill of Rights. And thirdly, she held the hand of friendship out to Kemi Badenoch. Uh, she's already got Tom Tugend out and she's got Penny Mordant in her team. She's saying, come on board, Kemi, let's make it three out of three. Um, Alistair, you also got new lines out of her on the online harms bill. And I don't know if you were able to hear any of that previous interview. Really compelling story and tragic story uh, of a mother who lost her teenage son in a terrible online grooming situation. What was Liz Truss saying about that last night? Well, basically, she was very, very pro-freedom of speech and she completely rejected the idea that things that are genuinely harmful uh, might be OK online, uh, but are not OK out in the real world. Uh, and I think it has been. It's been a huge debate uh, on GB News in all of our programmes. And Tom Harwood wrote a really good bit about it last night. I mean, I think, as with many things, there are still three and a half weeks to go. She's going to revert to that and spell out in more precise detail what her proposals would be to protect exactly people like those that you've just been talking to this morning. The benefit of these discussions, particularly where she hears directly from the public rather than opinion formers, is she hears what concerns them and she will take that on board and she will seek to act upon it. But I thought she did come out more clearly than ever. And I've always known that she's quite a big freedom of speech person. Uh, but she came out more clearly than ever about the protection of people uh, from the nonsense that does go on online. When we spoke to Liz Trust a couple of weeks ago, obviously we spoke to her about all the serious stuff. But one of the things that stuck with us is how she loved karaoke. What was her favourite hit, the Whitney song? I want to dance with somebody. I want to dance with somebody. And what I loved last night uh, was the, the news that she told us about how Larry the Cat likes her the most out of all the cabinet. That was brilliant. I, I thought it was superb. And again, I'm delighted to say, because I introed it saying to Liz, look, I'm not going to ask you any of those daft questions about what's the naughtiest thing you've ever done uh, or, or what have you. But you're right, whether it's karaoke or pussycats, uh, sometimes it yields great answers. And that question came from a viewer called Mel. Mel wanted to know how you're going to get on. Uh, and also she said that there used to be a cat in the foreign office. She's foreign secretary right now called Palmerston. But Palmerston has gone off to attend to other duties, apparently. Um, uh, but he did. I thought it was brilliantly political. She said, I am actually one of Larry's favourite members of the cabinet. So when I go in, the cat side, and I, I, I don't know if you're cat lovers and owners, we are. Sally and I'm I have a got Daisy. Cat lover. And, and you know exactly what she was talking about. It's true of cats and dogs. They'll walk into a room and a dog will go hey, 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 over everybody. A cat will look and say, mm, Okay, Izzy, I'm with you. Amen. Yeah. Sorry, buddy. Uh, and, I, and I just thought she, she talked to pet owners, which was clever, but she also kind of painted a picture of cabinet meetings and going into number 10 that so many pet lovers will immediately associate with. Absolutely. Well, absolutely. She'd be like the cat that got the cream this morning then after that, <laughs> Alistair. I, thank I, you. I, from the newspapers, I tell you, I think, I think she should be a happy bunny from the newspapers. I think she does come out of it well. And final quick one, because I know you're up against the clock, but I said it on air last night and I'll say it again now. I like politicians who occasionally will say, I can't give you what you want. And that's what she said on the WASPy women. And I know you were talking about that earlier yeah. on. So many of them just say, oh, yeah, well, I'll have another look at it. Oh, yeah, I'll try. But she said, nope, we've looked at it. We can't do that. We now move on. Yeah. But the war widows, I think they maybe get some good news if she wins.